You're listening to the God Stories Radio Podcast with Fritz, Mike, and Tina, bringing hope, comfort, and encouragement through the power of the Christian testimony. Listen live on the Mixler app and follow us on your favorite platform, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Radio.com. Stay connected with us on Facebook and Twitter at God Stories Radio. Everyone, to this edition of God Stories Radio. This is session 266. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Tina. It is Thursday night, Thursday. and we couldn't be more excited Absolutely. to be here with all of y'all. All How of you y'all. doing out yes, there? Woo-hoo. All of y'all. Mm-hmm. With a week off last week. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're excited, Mikey. I am. Ooh, that means it's going to be a good show. You bet. What's going on over there, Mikey? Since you're so excited. Oh, I'm excited. It's Thursday night. Um, you know, we were talking in, in the kitchen and the last couple of weeks, it's just, uh, riding the wave kind of sort of, you know, it's no stuff, no different stuff. Um, just walking with the father. There you go. No better place you can be. How about you? You just are riding over there. What are you doing? Yeah, you know, wow. there's just so much going on. I'm excited. I'm excited about the guest tonight. I'm excited about our guest next week. I because, know. Um, we were connected, actually. Uh, we had a listener that reached out to us, and she owns a publishing company, and she wanted to work with us to um, share some of the testimonies that have been in her book, and then also... Uh, put us in touch with tonight's guest, which um, who is also an author. So I was excited about just the fact that uh, she's contacted us and that we're doing all this and that we're working together. It's fun. It's exciting. It's always exciting to see what God is doing in in your life and our lives. Boy, that's the truth. With the show, you know, yes. to touch other people's lives. And didn't she have to uh, flexible? Or flexible had the flexibility she change. She did, yeah. yes, because last week you might have noticed we did not have a show. And that was because my darling husband, who is the producer of this show, had to work. <laughs> I did. And as we all know, the church comes first. A higher calling. That's right. <laughs> and so that's what he was doing. He was serving the church um, in his uh, the best of his capacity. So uh, we're grateful that he was able to step in and do that. And we're sorry we missed you all last week. But I promise you. I that know we're it's making, good to be back. That's for sure. Promise you that we're making up for it this week with Amen. this week's. Guess. Amen to that. So we did do a schedule shift because Tracy, who I was just mentioning earlier, was scheduled to be our guest last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she is now going to be next, next week. week's guest. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, but we got a good one tonight. We do. We do. We do. I'm super excited. And um, I think that we have some Facebook likes, too. So we want to say thank you to Lee White. Lee, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for liking us on Facebook. Welcome to the GSR family. We also want to say thank you to Sasha Mills. That's a familiar name. Yeah, she's been on the show like she, way back. Way yeah. back. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks, Sasha. I'm really <laughs> glad that you're still listening and that you liked us on Facebook. Um, and Angie Martin Stoltz. Thank you, Angie. Angie, welcome to the GSR family. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else out there has not liked us yet on Facebook, please do so and we can welcome or you. Or disliked us. Like us again. 
<laughs> we lost a few this week. Oh, well. Um, it happens. Yes, it does. Hurts my feelings, though. Yeah. They might have just accidentally clicked the button for all you that's, know. That's that, that's how I feel. Yes. I'm, I'm sticking exactly. with that. Exactly. Don't that's, worry about that's it. That's the way to look at it, babe. Don't sweat the small stuff. There right? you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to introduce this week's guest yeah. to you. Uh, her name is Pastor Monica Hawkins Gilbert. She's an author and speaker and a business strategist who is living out her dream being an entrepreneur and coaching individuals through their grief journey, um, advising executives of Fortune 500 companies and nonprofits. Over the last seven years following her son's murder, Monica Pas- um, has been has been passionate about inspiring women and men to understand grief and develop an action plan to step through personal growth and find their own new normal. In her books, A Shattered Heart, released in 2014, and Fearless Living, um, she was a spotlight author in 2015, and she exhibits her transformational uh, messages of hope and trust and renewal. Personally experiencing the power of the Lord in her own life has allowed Monica to prevail over low self-esteem, sexual and physical abuse, divorce, teen pregnancy, and the tragic death of her younger, youngest son. By believing in the word of God and knowing he has still a plan for her life. Monica is a real relevant dynamic leader spreading a global message of being able to begin again, live grow and move beyond your loss. And I think that's a message we all need Mm -hmm. to hear. Boy, you're not kidding. Absolutely. She has spoken to both large and intimate audiences of all ages and demographics, most notably offering the keynote address at Harvard University Extension School. Wow. Carnegie Mellon uh, University and uh, Progress Program and empowered over a hundred women and men through conferences and workshops. In addition, Monica enjoys collaborating with others through grief panel discussions and leadership team building. Uh, Monica's a native of Pittsburgh, go Pittsburgh, and currently resides with her newly uh, <laughs> new husband in Denver, Colorado. So um, we're just really um, happy to invite <laughs> and have uh, Pastor Monica Gilbert on the show. Thank you. Welcome, Pastor. Pastor Monica, welcome. welcome. Monica. Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you guys? And thank you for having me on this show. And to all of your audience, thank you for tuning in tonight. I'm excited. We're excited to yeah, have Yeah, we have you. a good crowd to listen to you tonight. Uh, uh, we're live on the Mixler app, and I have a good crowd tonight. All right. Well, Pastor Monica, kind of... Just tell us a little bit about your beginnings. Like, where were your parents from? Where were you born? I mean, I just mentioned that you're from the Pittsburgh uh, area, but tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes. So I am, um, I am originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to the proud parents of Robert and Barbara Hawkins and um, rest my um, father in peace. He's passed away, but my mother's there. I am the baby of eight children. Wow, big family. (laughs) Yes, a big family. And I love it. I love it. Um, And so I'm the baby of eight. And um, so I I was raised all the way up until God gave me my Abraham moment and told me to leave my kindred Uh. and go to a place you know not of. And I went. Um, in faith and relocated out here in Denver, Colorado over eight years ago. But yes, and so I've been out here and God has really shown himself to be faithful and and uh, um, and who he is to me um, since I was a little girl. Um, my parents, um, my mom was, you know, raised us in the church and, you know, like some of us, you know, maybe listening and just want to encourage you is that when the Bible tells us to train up a child in the way it should go, when it gets older, it won't depart. Um, but it will, it will, he will, you know, even if it does, it will come back. Mm-hmm. And so at 10 years old, uh, I really experienced a hand and the power of God in my life. And I, I, I was dedicated and I was faithful, but some teenager years struck me. And, uh, uh-huh. 
Yeah, yeah, those teenagers, you know how it is. <laughs> right. Yeah, we I've do. Got, <laughs> yeah, the, I, I got like, the attention. Yeah, go ahead. Just like you said, um, I believe that if, a, if, a, if someone truly with their heart, give themselves to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring them back if they walk away. Absolutely. And it just reminds me of the word when he sat in Hebrews 13 and 5, that last part. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he's, he's proven that to me, even though Tina and Mikey, you know, I love God. I did. I love God. And I just want to encourage the people, listen, when you decide to truly repent and come back, the God we serve, Jesus Christ, he is faithful and just to keep us. He will take us to experiences and things that you will learn to build that great relationship with God. And so when I left God, I didn't make all the good, all the right choices. I became a teenage mom um, at the age of, um, the tender age of 17. And um, by the time I was 20, I had two kids Mm -hmm. and it was, it was a challenge. It really was. And even though I wasn't faithful to God, he was still faithful to me. Amen. And that's what I want everyone to know. (laughs) And that's Um, not an easy life being a mom at that young of an age, because you're still trying to grow up too. Yes. I'm trying to grow up and find myself, you know, and I, you know, but, but my mom, stays consistent in God. She was that living epistle. And even though I, I I didn't feel like God was hearing me no more, I could watch my mom and continue her prayer life and her praying over me and the Holy Spirit, you know, at times I couldn't go and do but so much because God would just convict me, even though I wasn't, you know, where I should have been, you know, mm-hmm. I felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And I just tell you, I just um, realized, you know, I I became that teenage mom. My mom forced me to go to school. She said, "Your your 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 body's pregnant, but your mind's not. Amen. You have a great mind, Monica, mm-hmm. and you're going to go to school, you know, and you're going to go to college, and you're still going to get your degree." And I'm telling you, God was faithful, even when I wasn't faithful. And I graduated mm-hmm. from college, got my degree, and then I finally came to a pivotal point um, close to, I got married um, and I started really realizing I need God. I need God back in my life. Um, I'm missing something. And close to, right before we got divorced, I remember Tina and Mikey laying out on the floor and I said, God, if you are still the God I met at 10 and you're still the God that my mom prays to, then you need to show me your God to me right now. And God was like, oh, I'm glad you took me up on that. <laughs> I'm glad you asked me for that. <laughs> um, and he just began to give me peace to deal with what I was facing. He began to just help me navigate and put me, then he put me back. I, I repented. I came back to God and um, I, I um, found a great pastor. And they taught me more and more about my relationship with God. And I'm telling you, guys, God really started showing up for me. And I was faithful. I was I was doing great things for God and, and went through the divorce, but made it through that. And God was still faithful. He was still showing me. He was still telling me, Monica, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, nor has it entered your heart what I prepared for you. And Monica, I love you. And I, I love you with the everlasting love. And I was faithful. And I was like, God, I thank you. And even though, you know, Tina and Mikey, when you experience other child, even in Christ, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I had to be patient. Mm-hmm. And God just kept showing me he was my Jehovah Nisi. He was a banner mm-hmm. over me. He kept showing me he was my Jehovah Jireh. He was my provider. And I said, God, I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to stay single. I'm not going to date. I'm just going to work on my children and myself and healing because the divorce was hard. Yeah. And how old were you at that point, Monica? I was, yeah, I was, I was uh, 31 years old. So you'd been married for a while then. So that divorce must have been difficult. 
it, yeah, it was difficult. So I got divorced and um and God is faithful. He just showed me I I dealt with the pain. I didn't ignore the divorce. I didn't ignore what God says that, you know, how it you know, us being separated. He never planned for us to get divorced, but because of the hardness of our heart, mm-hmm. we got divorced and other biblical reasons. I'll keep that unknown right now, but we got divorced and um, I decided at that point um, in 2001, I decided, I said, God, I'm going to focus on you. I'm going to go forward in you and I'm going to live for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm not ready to date. I just need to heal and heal my children Mm -hmm. Um, because it was a very, as you introduced, it was a very abusive marriage as well. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I know you're faithful. I know you're faithful to bring me through this. And he did. And um, 2001, we, you know, we decided to separate and we were separated. And as I said, I just went forward in God. And I stayed single the whole time, never dated anything. Mm -hmm. But during the course of that time, um, Tina, Mikey, I was in a place that I was learning more and more about the hand of God. And really, he started to unpack the different things that were I suppressed in me. Um, you know, dealing with a teenage, being a teenage mom, I went through an abusive marriage and I had been um, sexually molested. And God really started healing me. My heart was, was shattered at that, was shattering. And I didn't even realize it. But how many know that he is our Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals? He will get down in there with his word. He said, you know, when you need the bomb of Gilead, he'll pour he'll pour it in you. And I was like, God, I was in that great place and he started killing me, started moving forward. And I think the biggest thing that God I had to learn to bow to God's sovereignty, meaning he could do what he wants when he wants because he's God. And I worship him not for what he gives me but for who he is. Mm-hmm. And um, and then the most tragic point came in my life. And I didn't understand it. I, I was faithful. I was going to church. I was doing all I can to be faithful to God. And that's when I learned how to bow to God's sovereignty in May 6, 2012, when God, Allowed, you know, my son got murdered. He was in college and he got murdered. And when you say there's a pain that's undescribable, that pain was undescribable. But I remember the moment I found, I got the news through my sister that my son was murdered. I mean, had gotten shot. And he wasn't dead yet. I remember telling God I was trying to call my pastor and my mom, and no one would answer the phone. And I remember just looking up and telling God as I was preparing myself to go to the scene where they said my son had got shot at. And I remember lifting up to God. I remember saying, God, if you are truly the God I've been serving, I'm all alone now, God. And it's just me and you. I need you to help me walk through this and face whatever there. But God, I know you're good to me. And Tina, Mikey, I I got dressed and I went down to the scene. And unfortunately, you know, I got there and and I was hoping that um, there, during the course of the time we were waiting for a while because they couldn't give us give me information. And then they finally gave the information to my oldest son and said, "Tell your mom to go home." And I said, I'm not going home. I'm not going to leave my child. I believe in God is going. He's not dead. And God whispered to me. He's so kind. He, Holy Spirit's like, he's gone. And I couldn't even believe God at that point. I was like, no, he's still alive. And he's like, no, he's gone. And then I finally accepted it. And God was, I was like, God, I can't leave here like this. And he let me. So the detective came and said, I'm going to let you behind the yellow line. We don't usually do this, but I'm going to let you behind them and you be able to see your son. 
and I went behind the yellow line and I saw my son in that state and I just was like God and I looked at him and I was like I'm going to miss you and all I can remember was saying to God I just fell on my knees and started screaming like God help me but I remember telling getting up and saying to everyone praying and saying listen I am the devil you asked for the wrong child this time every soul that I can snatch from your hand by preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ I'm going to do it because his name won't go down without me giving God the glory. And from that point on, I began to go through my journey of grief and and bargaining with God and couldn't realize that I lost them. But I held on to God. And that's what I want to encourage your listeners. As they're experiencing grief at the hardest time because of everything that's going on, don't run from God run to God. I'm an example that God will keep your mind. God will heal that broken heart. He will help you get through the journey of grief if you just believe his word. And that's where I stand today. I stand in the place that through every trial I went through from being sexually molested, from being I'm divorced from being a teenage mom for losing my son in murder, senseless murder, him coming from college. I can tell you unequivocally that the God that I serve is still faithful and just. He's a God that will heal you. He's a God that will move you back into a place that you can begin again if you just believe him. And he'll remind you as you started out, Tina, in my my autobiography of Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. For the spot he has towards me, towards you, is good and not evil to give us an expected end. And everything that I've been going through, Romans 8, 28 has been relevant in my life. It Mm -hmm. all works together for my good, the good and the bad. And though I have suffered a while, 1 Peter tells us, after you have suffered a while, God will strengthen you, God will keep you, and he will establish you. And can nobody tell me about the Holy Ghost? keeping me when nobody was there to wipe my tears. He reminded me every tear that you're crying, Monica, um, I'll I'll hold it in a bottle for you. And so Mm -hmm. the grief, it didn't take over me, but it showed me who my God is. And that's what I want to encourage everyone. Every tragedy that you've gone through, that you're going through, God will make you triumphant if you stand on his word. His word will accomplish that what it was sent out to do in your life and it won't return unto him void. And though I made some great choices, some bad choices, the God I serve, the word he's spoken over me, I have a good plan for you. He's doing it for me. And so that's my testimony. That's my word of encouragement to all of your listeners to say, the grief won't overtake you. If you just believe God. Well, Pastor Monica, I gotta I gotta stop you right there. I gotta I gotta jump in here because I'm about to get up out of this chair and run around up in here. I see I how excited he's been I don't getting know about when anybody, you speak. I don't know about anybody else, but do you feel that? I'm about to get up oh, and, yeah. I'm about to get up and run around in here. If I had a tambourine, I'd be playing it too. I'm not lying. I'm excited. Yes, that yes. just that gets me fired up, man. When you you get somebody yeah. like that that's been through that and the devil tried to take you out, you're going to have a little yeah. passion and you're going to have a little purpose and a little praise in your spirit. Yeah. And Pastor Monica yeah. bringing that right now, and I tell you what, I'm receiving it. I, I need it. <laughs> I need it. I need it. I need it. I'm about to get up and run around. I ain't lying, Pastor Monica. Yes. I, I'm about to run with you because I'm reminded <laughs> 
of the scripture when it says, I was weeping for a night, but my joy, mm. my joy, my joy is comes in the morning. morning. Amen. The joy of the Lord was my strength. And I'm telling you, when you're in that place of shock and denial and bargaining with God, God did a, um, God, if I could have just held on the phone a little while longer, because I forgot to tell this part, but he called me an hour before he died and was like, mom, I'm on my way home from school. I love you. And I said, I love you too. And something in my spirit wasn't right, but I, I prayed and, and, and God knew what I was about to face. But I'm telling you that the grief journey it hasn't been easy. Mm. And I'm not going to tell you that I still don't weep at times, but I'm always reminded of God's word that he said, your joy, Monica, your joy, your joy will come in the morning. Just believe me. And I just, sometimes I just, all I could do is just hold on to that. And sometimes I just got to sit there and just cry and just say, God, mm. and he's like, go ahead. I'll, I'm, the Holy Spirit makes utterance for me to God in my prayer time. So when I tell Tell you there's nothing impossible for God to deliver you from. Listen, He will do it. I'm I'm proof of it, and I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to share the testimony. At ten, when I met God, He never took His hand off of me. Even when I left God, He brought me back to Him. Even in the midst of a divorce, He kept me. Even in the midst of me seeing my son die and, and on the ground bloody, he kept me. And I'm telling you, when you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, he'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I look at people that grieve and that lost their kid like me, but I'm not on no medication. Praise be to God. I didn't suffer deep, dark depression that I didn't come out of. Thanks be to God. I didn't give up on serving God because he had his hand on me. So I just want to encourage everybody. Let Listen, listen put your praise on because he. I always want to encourage someone else to tell him. He said in Isaiah 61, for the spirit of heaviness, put on the garment of praise. <laughs> and every moment you get sad and you feel like you can't break through through finances, you feel like you can't get through divorce, you can't get through a murder of a child, listen, lift up your hands and give God some praise. And for that spirit of heaviness, he'll put you in a garment of, he'll give you the garment of praise for that spirit. He gave me beauty for my ashes. And that's why I'm able to share with you guys tonight the hope. This hope doesn't come from me. The hope comes from the Lord. My God. Wow. Uh, uh, You know, Pastor Monica, I'm just wondering, how do you pray to get to that point? You know, because in the midst of your grief, it's overwhelming. And you're so broken. How do you get to the point where you can pray for the, to be able to, to step out of that grief? You know what, Tina, honestly, you, you, you never get over the grief. Your grief, it gets easier with God. He mm-hmm. makes it easier because he said, I'm, I'm close to the broken hearted. Mm-hmm. And so there were times when I couldn't pray, mm-hmm. but I had a support system around me, just like you guys are support for each other, mm-hmm. your strength pulls off of each other. So I had a support system around me that when I couldn't pray, when I didn't feel like praying, when I got mad at God, I had someone to remind me and cover me in prayer and sit there with me. And I'm telling you, there's something about when the word of God is in you, it's going to come out of you eventually. And I think there's because I had a there's, there's a language that that grief has to that God understands and God, yes. he can receive it and understand right. it and, and he'll help heal you. Right. Along. And, and yeah. God, God sees the whole, the whole, he sees around the corner, he sees the whole thing. And he had people on purpose in your life at that time to help you yes. through that. Yeah. Yes, he did. And they, they were prayer warriors, you mm-hmm. know. 
they were people that, you know, at, at some point, they didn't always quote the scripture. They just lived the scripture before me mm-hmm. when I got into those places. And that's what, you know, I, I go, people always, in other people that, that sees people dealing with grief, in, you know, people dying from, you know, the virus and everything. And the fact of the matter is God will, will, will comfort you if you let him. Because Matthew 5 tells you, he's a blessed to those who mourn for they shall be comforted. You have to be willing to be comforted too. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that's what I was willing to do with, by my support system, that I was willing to allow God to use them to comfort me through each moment. And, he, you know, his birthday just passed and it reminded me and it was my husband was around me. My son was around me. People were calling me to remind me to say, God loves you and keep pushing, you know? Mm-hmm. That's a very important point that I think you made. You have to be willing to be comforted. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. a very important point because I think there's a lot of people who refuse to be comforted um, and they they live in the grief mm-hmm. and you see the toll that it takes on them. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. It, and it's so it's so heartbreaking to watch because there is nothing that you can do other than pray for them that they can mm-hmm. step out of that. She's a true testament of the peace that passes yeah. all understanding. Right. She is a walking, talking <laughs> ball mm-hmm. of peace. And there can only be one explanation for that. And that's the Lord, the it's Father Jesus, Almighty that yep. has injected her with it. And for to, her to exude that kind of joy when mm-hmm. she's been through that. And, and and you sit back and you go, how can she have joy? Mm-hmm. How can she have yeah. peace? Okay. And all those trials and all those tribulations. Well, that is truly the peace that passeth all understanding, and people can understand, right? And uh, I, it's just amazing to to listen to somebody <laughs> that's been through that kind of stuff and comes out on the other end with joy, right? And with peace, and it's with rare. passion. It's very rare. Yeah. And look where she is now. What she's doing now. Mm-hmm. I know it. Mm-hmm. I need to copy that book. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that and. It, I will definitely send it to you so you can read it. The whole journey. You guys, I'll definitely send you a copy. I want you, I wanted to get, you know, um, you know, any of your listeners, your first five listeners, um, I will send you a copy of six books, your first five listeners that you feel God is leading to give them my book. I want to sow a seed in their life with this book because this is the raw truth of the God, a loving God. And guess what? When I went through the healing, God had to teach me, put away the why questions, Monica. Why did he die? Why now, God? He was in his sophomore year at at a um, Clarion University for criminology. Mm-hmm. He didn't always make the right choices either, but he had turned a corner in his life. Why now, God, when I see him going forward so much and God was like put away the why right now and just let me heal you mm-hmm. let me heal you because you can never make sense of something that's so senseless right but you will see him again but I'll give you the reasons why later when I know your heart is able to handle it mm-hmm. but you will see him again I've heard and about I, four or five different message series during uh, <laughs> this testimony. <laughs> yes. Woo. It's what? After 152 days, I'm going to be, I'm just being real. And, and I'm just that type of person. You know, 152 days, you know, I was tormented by the enemy. He didn't make it in. He didn't, you didn't give him enough about God. You see the choices he made. Look, look, God let him die. And God did this. You know, I was letting the whispers get to me. Mm-hmm. And then finally, I knew God's voice. He said, my sheep knows my voice. And a stranger, you won't follow. It's like, hold on. Hold on, Monica. Listen. I'm getting ready to reveal to you why I permitted it to happen. And that's what God, he didn't have to. 
but he did it because he's a faithful and loving God. Amen. Because I asked him to. Mm-hmm. And so for all your listeners, listen, there's not, there's not a question that you can't ask. All I ask you to do is to ask it in reverence to a holy and righteous God. And when he gives you the answer, tell him thank you because mm-hmm. he didn't have to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Wow. And how is your older son doing? My oldest son, um, and, and I put in my book, that's part of my chapter, The Forgotten Mourner. Um, a lot of people were consoling me. And because it was a very public um, back in Pittsburgh, if you Google me, you'll see all the recordings of um, the news and trying to capture the person. But um, he's doing good. He's doing good. He is saved. Um, he got ordained a couple years ago. He's a pastor. Wow. Um, awesome. And he tells his story about losing his best friend. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, by losing his brother and how the journey on his, I mean, even though we experienced the same thing on the same day, we took two different, very two different journeys Mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. Um, He turned away from God. I ran close to God, Mm -hmm. but eventually we came back. He came back Mm -hmm. and he got ordained and he just moved forward with God because he was broken, like to see what happened to his brother. And so I praise God every day that he preaches the gospel, the unadulterated gospel of the word of God um, to all those who listen. I praise God for my son, Devon. His name is Devon. I praise God for uh, Pastor Devon. Mm -hmm. Um, And I had the privilege of um, being a participant in his ordination. So they were only three years apart, right? Correct. They were three years apart. They so, were three years apart. So they must have been two very close. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, two peas in a pot. Yes, they mm-hmm. were very, very close. Well, I'm going to um, prophesy that we're going to have Pastor Devon on. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. I think we get you two yes. preaching on the same telephone. It's set on fire. <laughs> Uh, the Holy Ghost it, might I'll rain think, down and uh, burn the place up, man. I'm telling you, I, uh, I, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, listen, I, in these last days, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on fire to win souls for, for God. Amen. And so is my son. And we are, we, like I said in my testimony, listen, we're going to take every chance to snatch yes. the, the people from the enemy. Amen. Yes. Because Amen. we're going to show them that nothing you've gone through, whether you chose it or you didn't choose it, God is still faithful and just. Ooh, amen. And that we want to encourage people to live for Jesus Christ. I can't, I couldn't live no other way, but for Christ Jesus, that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And I want everyone around me. Mm-hmm. I want to see y'all in heaven. Good Lord. Yes. I'm dying. <laughs> Amen. We're running out of time too, aren't we, Pastor Monica? We we got work to do. Yes, we we have a lot of work to do. And it's time to get busy. As the Bible says, the the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers workers are, are few. few. Mm. Mm. And guess mm. what? We gotta be workers and be transparent. Listen, that's why I just tell you, listen, I didn't always make the right choices. And when I wasn't faithful to God, God was faithful to me. Mm-hmm. And he brought me through. And he was waiting Amen. for you to say those words. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we so need to I'm have you on. To God. <laughs> we need to have you on about once a month. Bring a, <laughs> bring a word. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we're... Uh, listen. I'm ready for it. I'm just excited about God because I'm telling people there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. And I went through all that to say, here's the end. Here's the, 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 the another part of my story. When God told me to leave Pittsburgh after my son passed away, he gave me that Abraham experience. Go from your kindred and, and go to a place you know not of. And I came to Denver, Colorado. Um, in 2013, a year after my son died, and God gave me the best time of my life. My prayer life went to a different level because it was just me and God in a land that I knew not of. I didn't know nothing about Colorado. I didn't know no one in Colorado, but God was 
set me up for a blessing. Mm-hmm. And I came down here. I, I, I sold my house up in Pittsburgh, had a beautiful home and car, had everything. And God brought me down here in an apartment. I said, God, what are you doing? He <laughs> said, I'm getting ready to show you how great of a God I am to mm. you. And I moved down here. I moved into an apartment. I haven't lived in an apartment since I was in my 20s. I said, God, why am I starting all over again? He said, I'm getting ready to show you some great and great, do great and exceedingly things in your life. I came down here in an apartment a year and a half later. Because of my divorce, God restored my credit. God restored my influence. And he let me build a house from the ground up. I have better than I had before. And as Job said, at mm-hmm. my latter days, yep. uh-huh, it's getting ready to be greater than my former days. Mm. <laughs> yes. No eyes seen, no, right yes, well. no ears heard. I'm about to get up and run around. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> uh-huh. And what he has you doing right now, uh, helping people with the grief and so on, uh, your mm-hmm. work, you're living out, uh, God Stories Radio's verse of, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Mm-hmm. Praise be to God and Father, the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us mm. in all our troubles yeah. so that we can comfort yeah. those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Amen. I think the the thing that stands out. I don't mind being your poster board. (laughs) (laughs) I think the thing that just stands out for me the most with you is just, you know, the amount of faith that it must have taken to move forward in those initial days and months and even years. Um, to, like you said, allow God to, to fill you up. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think the temptation really is to, to not, to just shut down completely. Run the other way. Yeah. Most people do. Mm -hmm. But you didn't do that. And it is just rare and it is just beautiful. It's beautiful to hear and to just sort of witness even though we we didn't see it but we've heard about it but it's Mm -hmm. it really is a thing a story of beauty well it just reignites me you know sometimes we tend to get so self-absorbed in our own deal you know and there's so much going on in the world right now and then you hear a story like this and it's like man snap out of it dude Mm -hmm. there's a lot to do it's not all about Mm -hmm. you it's about Mm -hmm. souls it's Mm -hmm. about uh, the kingdom of heaven and how many we can take and we're running out of time and uh yes. I'm just uh yes. I'm I'm thankful for Pastor Monica coming on tonight because uh I think the Lord knew I needed a swift kick in the pants mm-hmm. and uh, I got it tonight <laughs> in a good way and I'm very appreciative of it. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think we all are Pastor Monica. Your story has a lot of power to it. Yes. And um oh, thank you. I'm just so grateful that you chose to share it with us and our listeners. Absolutely. And Tina, to your point is, I don't want no one to think that even after eight years that I still don't have my moments. I tell people you have to identify your triggers Mm -hmm. and then you have to develop a response to those triggers. His birthday is a trigger for me. Of course. Um, You know, there's different triggers for me. And so I had to identify them and I had to get a response. And the response has always been, that's why you hear me say these different verses, Psalm 61, God, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that's higher than me. Psalms 121, I will look up to the hills which come with my help. My help comes from you, God. And I'm reminded that there's purpose from my pain. And the purpose is to let everyone know when you trust God with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. When those triggers come and you respond, sometimes just in your tears, sometimes you got to respond in your anger, sometimes it's respond in sadness, but the ultimate response you got to get to is God's word because we say what the Bible says, we shall know the truth 
and the truth will set us free. It will set you free from every trigger that you may go through. And I, that's what I want to tell people. And God is such a God of restoration. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. I love that. I think it's one of my favorite things about God is watching him restore people's lives. And, um, you know, you mentioned some other things you had been through in your life, but it's amazing to watch what he can do to restore you. You know, you think sometimes you're so broken, you can never be put back together again. Yes. But it's not the case. But um, That's not the case because I just had to remind myself and I had to learn to live out, you know, Psalms 139. I was fearfully and wonderfully made by mm-hmm. God. And there's nothing that God permits me to go to come to that he won't bring me through it. Mm. If I'm willing. Mm-hmm. Amen. If I'm willing. If I'm willing. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to encourage your audience. Listen, the testimonies of me, I'm testifying of the goodness of God. I'm testifying of greater is he that was in me than he that was in the world. And through my suffering, I learned the greater was in me. I think that's such and a key now word. my triumph. He's doing great things for me. I'm sorry, Tina. No, I was just saying, I think that's such a key word, the suffering and the trials, because um, something happens to us when we go through those processes. You know, we yes. come out better on the other end, which mm-hmm. it's so hard to mm-hmm. to fathom that. But suffering and persecution and trials, they take us to a different level with God. They do. They do. And guess what? It really reveals to us how much we need God. Mm -hmm. And it reveals to us how much God will keep us, keep us. And and so that's the beauty of it. I I could, um, I love what Martin Luther King said, faith is standing at the stair, standing at the bottom of the steps not knowing where the stairwell will end. Mm -hmm. And Mm. sometimes with God, you got to stand at the step, not knowing the end. I didn't know that I couldn't ever see my place right here after sexual molestation, after divorce, after an abusive marriage, after the murder of my son, that I still would be able to tell God, thank you. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I would be able to say, and all things give thanks, God, for this is the will of God concerning my life. And it wasn't just for me to get through it, but it was for me to be an example of the power of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. to someone else that they can get through it. Mm. Wow. You, yep. You're such a joy. You really <laughs> are. <laughs> that, that brings uh, Revelation twelve eleven, where... They, yes. they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb yeah, and by the word of their testimony. Testimony. Yes, God. Amen. And I'm grateful for the testimony. So I thank you guys. I'm really excited about God. I'm, I just want to encourage everyone just to say, listen, time is of the essence and let's maximize our time and our prayer and our worship and showing others the love of Christ so that if we lift up the name of Jesus, he will draw all men unto them and they can be delivered and set free from every trial and suffering that they thought they couldn't come through. And most importantly, that their name, if they believe in Jesus Christ, that he died and buried and resurrected, that their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's why we go through suffering, to tell them the power of God mm-hmm. and where we end up is in eternity. Mm-hmm. With him, yes. Man. Yes. Wow. The altars ought to be full <laughs> right now. <laughs> uh-huh. Man. Pastor Monica, you got to promise me you'll come back. Any time you want me to come back, Whenever you want me to come back, I'm available to you guys. Thank you. I believe in what you're doing. And I believe that you have not 
seen Ephesians 3 and 20 in each and every one of your life. He's getting ready to do exceedingly, mm. abundantly, oh, above above and everything. beyond mm. all that you hope is for. That's right. According to the power that works in you. And remind everybody that there's treasure in this earthen vessel to reveal the excellency of Christ Jesus. That's what I want to encourage you guys. So keep doing a great work. It was a joy. It was such a joy to be with you guys. And anytime, just call me. Thank I'll you. be there. Well, Thank good. You. Well, Tina's got your information and we're going <laughs> to we're gonna stay in touch. And uh, I promise you, we'll be calling you. Yes. We I'm- will. We'd definitely love to have your son on the show. Too. We really would. I was I was not joking. I I'd, I'd love to to have him on or even have both of you on. It'd be fantastic. Yes, and he would love to come on. And I will definitely make sure we coordinate that, Tina. Sounds great. Sounds <laughs> great. Devon would love it. And let us know when, and we'll show up. Sounds great. I will be in touch. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, I want to say hello to everybody that was on Mixler tonight. We've had a a great crowd on Mixler and nobody, Pastor Monica, I mean, nobody has left and uh, everybody's been chatting away wow. and amen and then shouting you down and mm-hmm. texting and everything. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, she said the first five people that wanted a book, um, contact us, godstoriesradio at gmail.com and we'll get in touch with Pastor Monica and get you a book. Uh, I know I'm getting mine. That's all I know. And I hope she signs it and draws a little smiley face on there and <laughs> prays over it. Uh-huh. Send some of that Holy Ghost down here to Florida. That's what I'm talking about. But, yeah, uh, my you know, family lives in Florida. Oh, you'll have well, to come visit us. Um, we, yeah, didn't, we didn't give her well, a chance. GSR is, the, huh? GSR is the king of the shameless plugs. Oh, yes. Well, that we are. Pastor oh. Monica, uh, take it away. You know, just plug the church, plug the book, plug your son. I mean, just uh, talk about anything good. Uh, and uh, we're home of the shameless plug here on, on God Stories Radio. Amen. Well, thank you for that. I just want to tell you guys, listen, as I said, um, I will give the first five books. Just contact the, um, the radio station and you will have that. And you you who have not met that first five, you can go to my website, ignite-change.com, and you can order a copy of my book. You can get it through Amazon, and you can download it. You can um, and also uh, download it for you and move forward with that. So we just want to tell you, stay in touch with me. We got some great things coming up with this Ignite Change. Um, I started in January. Um, I'll be doing a journey of grief. We walk together. We'll be having um, a special session with um, those who want to learn how to really get to that point to let the joy of the Lord be their strength and also be able to help others move forward in God, um, whether it's remembering your child or whether it's doing things for the ministry, because everything I'm doing is to be a vehicle for them to be able to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So, Look for January. Some great things are coming up our way. Just stay in contact with us. Go to ignite-change.com and you'll be able to contact me and um, share whatever you want to share with me and um, tell you how to stay connected and how to go from tragedy to triumph. And I thank you for listening to my testimony today. And I give all the glory and honor to the God I serve, the Lord Jesus Christ the lover of my soul. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank you for bringing some encouragement up in here. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm telling you hey. what, I needed hey. that. And I thank you. I thank you for, uh, we ask a lot of people to come on the show and not everybody says yes. So we appreciate it. Really, really do. Absolutely. Thank you for having me anytime. I really seriously mean it. Anytime I'm here to serve. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ any way I can. And the more I can share, the more I like to share. Amen. Well, I want to say to my folks on Mixler, I see a bunch of you that um, I can't see. If you follow us on Mixler, then I can see who you are and give you a shout out. You can also chat with us during the show. And I would love uh, for the five or six folks, I, I can't see who you are. Donnie Seeger, I see you and Robert Herman on tonight. There's a bunch that I do see. 
I would love to give you a shout out and uh, have you chat with us during the show. And this was a good one. You dialed into a good one tonight. I know I've been encouraged if nobody else was. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, drop us a line, godstoriesradio at gmail.com. If you'd like to be on the show, it's godstoriesradiotina at gmail.com. We would love to have you in person, but um, like uh, Pastor, she uh, she's dialing in from Colorado tonight. So uh, yeah, how's the weather on Colorado? It's getting chilly. It was sunshiny, and now it's getting chilly. But then it'll go back to being warm again. So that's Colorado. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, guys, don't be afraid to share God Stories Radio with other people. I mean, it's it's free, you know, and there is so much that people can glean from just listening to these podcasts. And, you know, the whole point is to spread hope, encouragement, and just the word of God to people, to let people know God is there. He's just waiting for them to reach out. Amen. Babe. Amen. Um, so, you know, we've got to get active and we've got to try um, and, you know, ask the Lord to lead you in how to approach people and how to share him with others. All right. Wonderful. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks again to... um to pastor for calling in tonight uh just just a delight so well that about wraps it up for session 266 i'm fritz i'm mike and i'm tina god bless god bless god bless